North Korea is notorious for its cultish conventions. From a very young age, children must memorize various songs that express their love for their country. Students must swear allegiance to the state every single day, and if they refuse, they could be put into custody, or even assaulted and beaten. And this indoctrination works. Loving the state is practically synonymous with being a good person. You might think this sounds a little bit familiar, and that's because it is. This is the United States of America. Now, I'm in no way trying to trivialize the horrors that go on inside the borders of North Korea. The penalties for expressing a negative opinion of the state in North Korea are far worse than anything we could imagine in the United States. My purpose in placing these American traditions in North Korea was to view ourselves from an outside perspective, because patriotism is so ingrained in the American psyche. I'm not saying that patriotism is a totally negative thing. Instead, I would like to take an in-depth look into what it is, if it is rational, and if it is beneficial. What is patriotism? Let's make a distinction clear. Patriotism is not the same thing as nationalism, although the public tends to confuse them. Nationalism is not just patriotism for people you don't like. Nationalism is the movement to advance a particular nation, especially through self-governance of a sovereign state called a nation-state. A nation itself is not a state, but instead a group of people who are culturally connected. But how are the people in the nation connected? There are two types of nationalism which attempt to answer this question. Ethno-nationalism, where a shared language, history, and especially ethnicity make you part of the nation. And civic nationalism, where citizenship and belief in the state's institutions make you part of the nation. The prime example of civic nationalism is the United States since there is a variety of ethnic groups, languages, and cultures, yet we all identify as Americans. But don't go out calling yourself a nationalist. Firstly, the general term of nationalism is used somewhat interchangeably with the ethno-nationalist movement inside white supremacy called white nationalism, which seeks a white ethno-state through the removal of other races. White nationalism is found throughout the world, but movements tend to stay isolated inside individual countries, like the United States. But wait, there are already minorities inside the United States, so how could a white nationalist possibly get rid of other races? Hmm... Well, you could ship them away from their homes and communities, or you could kill them. I think you can understand why white nationalism, along with many other forms of ethno-nationalism, is a bad idea. But secondly, the belief in a nation-state is only one piece of nationalism. The other piece is an aggressive devotion to your nation. In his essay, Notes on Nationalism, George Orwell describes nationalism as inseparable from the desire for power. When the nation rules a state under a nationalist movement, the state often results in becoming expansionist because of this very desire. If you think imperialism is bad, you probably shouldn't be calling yourself a nationalist. Even though nationalism is not the same thing as patriotism, the two are very strongly linked. Patriotism is defined as loving one's country to the extent that you personally identify with it, and in many cases, are even willing to kill or die for it. Patriotism is sort of like the devotion of nationalism, but towards a state instead of a nation. I think you can see that major complications can potentially emerge. Firstly, how rational patriotism is depends on the country being discussed. For instance, if a country is a dictatorship or a monarchy, I would argue that patriotism is really just about defending a select few individuals who likely don't deserve to have these high positions of power. And that's not rational. But I'm more concerned about American patriotism. And as we know, the United States is a democratic republic, at least in theory. So this raises an arguably more important question. Can you continually be patriotic even as leadership changes? Well, let's first ignore whether or not it is rational to do this, because the vast majority of Americans label themselves as patriotic through different administrations. This simple fact reveals that people do not derive their patriotism through the state or their policies. Americans may not derive patriotism from the state's policies, but they do use it to make opinions about them. For example, calling a politician, policy, or political party 
un-American, is an appeal to patriotism that relies on the claim that American values are good values. But is this claim true? If you consider American values to be the ones that this country was founded on, that is definitely not true. Many of our founding fathers were slave owners, and many were especially cruel to their slaves. They believed women were inferior to men, and thus were not allowed to vote. They only allowed land-owning men to vote because they believed that the working class was not informed enough to elect a leader. To most people today, these values are not admirable, and you would definitely not want to espouse them as your own. I hope you wouldn't anyways. They may be products of their time, but that's because those were the values of the time that our country was founded. We should not idolize the Founding Fathers specifically for holding some values that we like, but completely ignore that they held others that we don't. Well, who cares what some old white men from the 18th century think? What about the present day? The problem is that trying to determine American values is complicated. Should we derive them from our politicians, or should we derive them from the people? Either way, many would definitely disagree with these values, and their Americanness is debatable at best. Chances are that many Americans, including yourself, would likely agree with another country's values more than the United States's. So why be proud of being an American specifically? We know why. Because it is your country. This is where the second complication comes in. A patriot personally identifies with their country. So, out of a sense of self-preservation, they will end up forming beliefs about their own country differently than how they form beliefs about other countries. An American patriot will begin with the assumption that the United States is good, while other countries are less good or even bad. Not only are these thoughts irrational and unjustified, but in the name of patriotism, they prevent legitimate criticism of public policy from gaining popular support. Although patriotism isn't derived from the state's policies, it will inevitably be used to defend the state and the status quo, even when they arguably shouldn't be defended. For example, students across the country pledge allegiance to the state every morning, and not doing so is seen by many as to not only be unpatriotic, but treasonous. Perhaps we shouldn't pledge blind allegiance. At the end of the day, patriotism amounts to an institutionalized version of tribalism. It's more of an instinct than a rational belief. There's nothing wrong with appreciating some values that happen to be described as American, but American values are not necessarily good ones, and vice versa. It's important to remember that happening to espouse some American values does not mean you're patriotic. Patriotism, as I've said before, requires that you personally identify with your country, and this is what leads to irrational thinking. But even if patriotism is irrational, Perhaps it can bring us together to do great things. American patriotism is more extreme than other developed countries because of our origins. Unlike many old world countries, which were mainly formed from ethnic groups that stayed in those regions for hundreds of years, the United States is a nation of immigrants. When the colonies came together to fight the British in the Revolutionary War, the colonists didn't really know what it meant to be American. Perhaps you were a Virginian, or a New Yorker, or a Georgian. But even those labels had very little meaning. And then in 1776, there's this new country called the United States of America that has very little guiding identity. If you know a little bit about American history, you know that the Constitution was not our first founding document. That title goes to the Articles of Confederation, which centers around an extremely small national government and larger state governments. But this national government was dysfunctional, and the Founding Fathers came together again to create a more unified country with the Constitution. The United States needed to centralize to survive, and this meant that the public needed to adopt an American identity. American nationalism, and patriotism as a result, was created out of necessity. So patriotism did play a role in creating the United States' dominant role in global politics today, but perhaps it has outlived its welcome. It is detrimental to us today by preventing us from making necessary change. For example, changes to the Constitution have largely been pushed out of acceptable public discourse because of the idea that it is un-American to change our founding documents. But our government is flawed in many ways, like how the president can be elected without the popular vote, or how voting districts can be drawn or gerrymandered to over-represent one political party. 
Since the idea of our nation is tied very heavily around our shared history and not so much a shared culture or ethnicity, many Americans don't want to change these founding documents. So ironically, the same movement that allowed us to adapt in the 1700s is holding us in place today. What does this mean for you? Well, I can't really tell you how to live your life, but at least for me, these whole national celebrations are getting a little old. I mean, I like fireworks as much as the next guy, but I was never really big on the whole America part of these celebrations. With the Black Lives Matter protests, which for a lot of white people, exposed many of the flaws of various areas of the United States government, there were a lot of questions on how to celebrate 4th of July. The pandemic made a lot of those choices for us this year, but in the upcoming years, I'm curious as to whether the holiday will persist in its current form. I predict that as we face uncomfortable truths about the history, present, and future of our country, we will begin to reevaluate our hyper-patriotism, and hopefully, begin to reject it. Goodbye, Internet.